I've been waiting so long to be able to make this video. And we're finally here, people. So yes, in the words of Lizzo, all the rumors are true. And by all the rumors, I mean the title of this video because I got a job. God bless. I am so, so excited, honored, blessed, thankful, just relieved in a sense. I feel like I didn't realize how much it was weighing on me in the job search process of just like the constant not knowing and tension and going back and forth and like waiting on things and searching for things and all of that until I actually got that offer email. And I finally felt myself like whew, relax in a way that I didn't know that I needed for the first time in a while. I'm just so, so, so looking forward to starting this new chapter. I do think I kind of alluded to it in um, my last video if you guys watched. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that up before this one, but it was my week in my life and it was actually the week that I found out that I got the job and I just watched it back and it's not up yet, but I might, I think I'll probably put it up before this because I didn't mention the job. I wanted to wait until I could do like a sit down, talk about it with you guys instead of just thrown into another vlog. So I'm so happy. <sighs> anyway, so in that video, basically in the first couple of days, I, I kind of like vented about how I was so nervous and how I was like, oh my God, I don't think I got it because I still haven't heard back. Even though it hadn't even been a week since my last correspondence, like I was just so on edge that every day felt so long without hearing back. And like in real, in hindsight, like I, I, <laughs> I sounded kind of dumb because that's really not that long. But you know, when you're in that, like if anyone out there can relate to this feeling of like waiting to hear back on a job or searching, like it just feels Every hour just feels so much more, like it has weight to it, I guess, when you're waiting to hear back. So, and then the next day after that clip was when I got the email with my offer that I got the job and I was just so, so relieved. But the vlog was a little all over the place because I didn't want to like say too much, but also I think you could see a change in my demeanor, especially when I was talking about planning for September and like how much there is to look forward into and stuff, which I, I do feel that way, even if I hadn't gotten this job, like I do think there's a lot of exciting things happening in September, but um, bottom line, yeah, I'm starting a new job a week from today. So today is Labor Day, it's Monday, September 6th, and I start on Monday, September 13th, I'm working remotely, but like, okay, I have to decide like how much I do and don't want to say about this. I feel like I've said a little bit here and there because I obviously have been taking you guys along with the process of, you know, applying, getting interviews. This is the one that I had the latest two interviews for and I did like a writing assignment and all that. So I've been in the process of the last month, really, I spent the month of August um, pretty much going back and forth about this. But I think the work will be so, so interesting and I'm starting at such an interesting time. So, okay, let's do the, the basics. <laughs> if you don't watch me or if you're not subscribed or something, hello, my name's Christy. I do vlogs in New York City about my life, about work. Now I'll be back to my work vlogs, which I've honestly missed and I'm so excited to get started with them. I really loved doing like work week in my life kind of content and my YouTube definitely kind of reflects where I'm at. And I feel like the last few months, like I just haven't really been in my groove or motivated to vlog just because I feel like my life internally is such a mess, like while I've been looking for jobs and things. And I don't know, I just feel like it'll get so much better from here. And there's so much that will hopefully translate to YouTube and my content and everything that you guys will enjoy. And like summer was definitely fun and it was nice for me in a sense to have a break. And I really, I feel like focused my energy this summer on like socially recharging. I feel like this summer was such a great way for me to like get back into spending time with friends and like meeting new people. And that was really, really great for me, but I'm excited for this new chapter going into a new season, literally and figuratively of life into the fall is um, really throwing myself back into finding myself professionally and you know, into work and everything. So, okay, enough of that. I'm gonna tell you what it is. Who, well, I'm not telling you who I'm working for. I do want to keep this one also private, like I did with my last job, just because it is, it's pretty similar in the sense that it's a very small nonprofit organization. So I'm not going to say exactly where I'm working, but I am working at a nonprofit and I'm actually really thrilled about it because 
at my last job i know i keep saying at my last job but it is the most similar to this so i feel like it's easy to compare for me at least even though i know you guys don't know where it was but i, I explained like in those work vlogs if you watch those um kind of like just of what i was doing and stuff to a degree where i wouldn't you know invade privacy or anything but i am doing a similar thing i'm actually having a very similar role in the sense that i'm still doing un advocacy for a nonprofit. so i'm working in the un office of this nonprofit. this is actually based um, in another country the nonprofit is not based in the u.s and so the only u.s office is here in new york it's i thought i worked on a small team before this is an even smaller team so that's again why i want to like keep a level of privacy because it's not a huge organization like unicef or something and as i mentioned through the process of when i was interviewing and everything it is actually an organization that we worked really closely with at my last job so um they have a lot of projects in common and i actually knew the woman who i ended up interviewing with i didn't know her but i knew of her through work that we did because a lot of nonprofits in new york that work on the same issues it's similar issues um we'll do things together there's like working groups collaborations for events that kind of thing so the crossover like people get to know one another in the um space quite a bit and so i was familiar with her and she knew everyone on my team that i had worked with before so i was really excited when i saw that they had a position opening up because i was like oh my god i know this organization i know the work they do and i really admire it and i'm familiar with it um and i know that it aligns really well with not only what i did before but myself and like where i want to go in the future let's see if we can paint the picture i don't want to be too redundant if you have been watching all of my vlogs and you're like okay we've heard this a million times but for those of you who are new subscribe <laughs> i just lost my train of thought i just have so many thoughts also i just got my hair done yesterday and i'm wearing it in the middle part which is like unusual for me so let me know what you think i love the color though i got it done by a gal named rowan parker at fox and jane salon bowery if you're wondering but in my next vlog that i'm doing this week i'll actually go in depth of like the before and after and stuff but if you notice anything different anyway that was just a shout out <laughs> to the loyal subscribers out there who know that i don't usually wear my hair like this but anyway back to what i was saying I just have so much going on in my brain right now that I'm a mess. Things that I really do care about too, that I want to kind of expand more and grow in my own career going forward that I think will be really interesting to work on these a little bit broader issues from what I was doing before. And basically, so if you don't know what UN advocacy is, it's basically lobbying at the UN on behalf of this nonprofit. So the way I describe it to my friends, because it's kind of like abstract if you don't, if you aren't like familiar, but I work at the UN, but I work for a nonprofit. It's like setting up meetings and building relationships with diplomats at the UN, member states, if I want to, you know, there's a new country entering the Security Council in the next few years, I want to like start setting up meetings and letting them know like, hey, this is research we've done, these are issues we care about and that we think would be really beneficial for you to bring to the table in negotiations in the Security Council or like X, Y, and Z, this is why you should champion these issues that we work on. See, this is, there's a lot to it, but from the nonprofit side, like we bring in experts and researchers and they do research on the ground and people from civil society so like just normal civilians and their stories and we'll bring their stories and them to the un to give them a voice and a platform to be heard at the un and ideally we persuade them to incorporate those perspectives and concepts and ideas and research into their own policy work and then on the flip side, it's also a lot of like monitoring constantly what's going on at the UN, developments, negotiations. I've always been really drawn to UN work. I think that it's so interesting, but I really, what I learned at my last job is that I really, really like working at the UN, but not for the UN and having a mission driven organization that I'm serving and having common just issues that I care about and working with people that are passionate about the same things and taking that um and like bringing that to the un and it's just really meaningful work that i'm really excited about yeah so that's a little bit of background that's essentially what i'm doing is i'm still doing un advocacy um but now just for a different nonprofit with similar but a little bit different issues again it's still it's like hard to describe in abstracts but i do want to keep privacy which i hope you respect more logistically i'm trying to think of questions that people would ask because i didn't want to announce it before this video so i didn't necessarily like collect questions like ask me about my new job on instagram because i wanted this to be like the 
Ta-da! So I'm trying to be proactive about what I think people would want to know and what they would ask. So I'm sure people are going to want to know, um, is it a short-term contract again? Is it going to be, you know, six months or something like I've had in previous jobs? And the answer is, it is another fixed term contract. So I did sign for a certain length. It's not just like an indefinite permanent position, but it is longer than the other contracts I've had in the past. It's a 10 month contract. So I do have this job solidified. I won't have to search for a job for sure for 10 months, which feels like a lifetime to me because I'm so used to like hopping around and having shorter term contracts. And I'm so excited about the opportunity to be in one place, in one job for almost a year. I never asked in the interview process why it wasn't just 12 months, um, which I probably could ask, but it's, I think it's because my assumption is like based on the UN calendar because I'm starting right at the beginning of a very busy season. The General Assembly starts like UNGA is the thing. Every September, the General Assembly all meets. Traditionally, it's like in person in New York. So all the like big delegations and, you know, diplomats and presidents will come to the UN and meet physically in person. Last year, it was virtual. This year, I think they're doing a little bit more in person, but it even like since they said that things have changed because you know things are just changing constantly with the pandemic um, but i do think it's going to be still mostly virtual it's the 76th unga so basically starting off with that we're hitting the ground running and it's already going to be starting on a busy season but yeah the un calendar is definitely um up and down and there's lots of different busy seasons for different reasons it's just it's, i'm really excited about it but yeah it's 10 months so i will be in this job until next summer what else oh another logistic thing um i am working remotely essentially especially because most of my colleagues are in another country in a very different time zone but making events and book launches and that kind of thing everything's pretty much virtual but i do have an office space that i'll be able to go to when i want to which is such a blessing i'm so excited you guys i've missed working in an office in some ways what i've always said i wanted since you know, the pandemic and everything is a hybrid. I feel like a lot of people feel that way where you have the option, especially when it's up to you when you want to go into the office, um, but you still are able to, you know, work from home when you want to, when it works for you, like everything you can do remotely, which is nice. But if you want to, you can go and be in the office. So um, again, like I said, it's a very small team. So we do have um, one office in New York that's by the UN. I don't even know everything logistically yet. Uh, I still have to, you know, since I am not starting for a week, I just sent in last week, I've been doing correspondence with the HR and they're also, like I said, in a different time zone. So it's been kind of back and forth with doing paperwork and documentation and getting myself registered in the organization and all of that good stuff. So um, I, I'm sure as I continue to vlog and start work and, you know, go into the office for the first time, like I have to go and get like access and all of that stuff. Because of COVID restrictions, the UN itself that you can't get to it as a CSO member, which is a civil society organization. So like nonprofits, um, NGOs, it's still closed to us, which is a bummer because I would love nothing more than to like be able to go and attend a physical meeting at the UN. But um, she said, you know, we'll see when that happens but hopefully in the near future, they'll open it back up to nonprofits and I'll be able to actually go and do work physically at the UN and meet with delegations in person and stuff, um, which would be amazing. But for the time being, everything UN wise is virtual. So I have an office that I can go to if I want to, but I wouldn't really get to go to the actual UN anyway. So it's kind of like not necessary for me to go into that office. I definitely will want to because I miss that a lot. And because it's at the UN, it's like essentially the same commute that I had when I worked at UNICEF. And I love that area, just like Grand Central. What else would people have to ask? Oh, this is actually something that I wasn't expecting and I'm actually really thrilled about. And I know that a lot of people probably wouldn't be, but because of my particular lifestyle and how I do social media, and it's essentially having two full-time jobs. And so I learned after UNICEF, I was like, you know, it was great to do and I really liked making work vlogs and stuff, but I do feel like it would help if I just had like one day that I could, you know, a four day work week where I could use one day to put in energy into my social media stuff, to videos, to content, to that kind of thing, 
where I wasn't doing that until like 2 a.m. to compensate for being at work all day kind of thing. And this job, which I didn't expect to find, um, is actually part-time. It is 28 hours a week. So I will have a day and like it, it will change like i don't have a fixed schedule of what hours i'm going to work because it depends on un calendar events that are going to be going on and like when i'm going to need to be at certain things or working on certain things but um i'm actually so so excited that it's part time because then i'll that'll give me a little more flexibility and like freedom to do YouTube, to record podcasts, to like put my energy into it so I'm not just exhausted by it all the time. And like I will have one day of the week where I can record with Sierra who's on the West Coast for our podcast. Like that was so exhausting when both of us were working. You know, I was working full time. I didn't really have that much time to record. And now especially weekends are like mostly social things which wasn't always the case earlier on in our podcast. Um, I just feel like this is so ideal for me and I know that a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that because if you're not, you know, making full-time income, then it, that's not enough. But luckily in my situation, like I feel super, super blessed. And obviously like it's a huge privilege to be able to take a part-time job, but I'm really looking forward to having the flexibility of time because I do have, you know, secondary income from social media. It's just not very common, at least in my experience to find part-time opportunities, especially like paid work that's part-time so i'm really really excited about this i just feel like it fell into place and it's just everything that i needed that finally came together in the right time for me and i don't know i just think it's like too good to be true almost because i'm so excited about it and like the work i get to do and the team i get to work on and like the mission of the organization and even like paperwork i've been doing just reading like their code of conduct and more like cultural things in the organization and stuff um i just feel like it aligns so well with me and that's what i really really wanted for myself this year the top of 2021 my word was alignment like i want to find work that I align with in my values and that fulfills me and that I'm excited about and that I feel like I am fit for but also can still challenge me and I don't know I'm just really looking forward to it basically I'm trying to think of anything else people would ask I'm sure you guys will have questions that I will try to keep up with if you want to ask any more DM me on Instagram comments whatever you feel like um but yeah that's my new job i'm starting in a week actually this will be up even closer to my start date so monday and i just couldn't be more grateful to be in this position get excited subscribe if you're not already um work content to come work vlogs work in my life going into the office vlogs i kind of miss like work outfits but again in limited quantities thanks for watching this update video thanks for sticking with me i know it's been kind of like rocky especially with my content and my life this past summer but we have so much to look forward to in the fall and i'm just so excited to share this with you guys and i'm even more inspired and motivated for my own vlogs and content and doing like work tiktoks and stuff i don't know i just feel like there's a lot on the horizon and this season is going to be amazing so and plus like other new york vlogs and fall content and stuff just i'm just so thrilled so thanks for watching thanks for supporting me i love you guys so much and i'm so so grateful for you always sticking with me it really means a lot here's to a new chapter finally getting a job if you're out there in the job search i know where i know how you're feeling <laughs> this was the past essentially it was like two and a half months that i was very intently searching i probably started searching seriously mid-june um and then you know got my first interviews in july and then things fell through and then it's been a roller coaster but just keep looking just keep going even when you think there can't possibly be something like you never know what's going to pop up so just keep those alerts on and it might drive you crazy but it will be worth it when you find the right job for you in the end so that's all. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next vlog, which will probably, no, it'll probably be a weekend vlog, <laughs> but soon after that will be my first day of work vlog. Okay, love you guys.